Hey everyone, this is Captain Fruit reporting for duty for the weekly comic book review for June 7th, 2023. Alright, for those of you that are new to the channel, I want to take a moment to say hello. We've been getting more subscribers. Thank you for joining. We hope you enjoy the content. And for everybody else, thank you for sticking with it. Now, if you aren't familiar with this, I give you my review of the comic books for the week. And I give them a score of 0 through 10, 7 being average. There's going to be a lot of decimal points because average means more are going to fall towards the middle. You're also going to hear my notes. And I'm going to use the League of Comics Geeks to help provide information too on the books with a really, really brief synopsis of what happens as well as other scores so you can get that comparison. But here's the thing, I want you to participate. I want you to share your thoughts in the chat below too. Did you like a particular issue? Did you disagree with my thoughts? That's okay, we can all be civil here together and have a little fun, but also too, I wanna to take a moment to say hello to all my friends out there in my son's class and that is school. It's their last day of school today. You little legends are gonna to continue to grow and do great things and I once again I want to mention too that it was an absolute pleasure getting to see you all a little while ago you were so kind and showed me so much generosity having me sign autographs and everything I never thought I'd be doing that again uh, it was it was it was a real blast all right so here we go we're gonna start with today's bottom three and I'm gonna tell you some of the bottom ones weren't that bad they were actually pretty good it was a pretty good week so my number three pick for the bottom are you ready for this one was Deadpool better blood number one yeah deadpool batter blood number one now as i said don't don't go bringing out the pitchforks and everything yet this actually gave this book a 7.01 so my bottom of the batch here isn't that bad really 17 out of 21 liked it with a 3.6 average rating which really puts it right around where i did it the creators are rob liefeld with the artwork as the writer uh was chad borrow or B B bowers <laughs> bowers can't speak there deadpool wolverine cable it doesn't get better than this wade wilson is back and he's brought some frenemies now this is continuing on from the last mini series of bad blood so if you have haven't read that it might be a little more you know unusual for you but i read it and i actually enjoyed this as i said 7.1 is not a bad score if you are a deadpool fan you probably should check this out if you're not a deadpool fan sure it might not mean as much to you but i did find it enjoyable i thought the art was pretty good i, I know there's some some cheap shots that get thrown there on life built way so anyway my number two you ready for this one was none other than daredevil number 12 i gave it a seven the Red Fist Saga Part 12. Chip Zdarsky writes it, the artist Marco Cicchetto. And anyway, it says Chip Zdarsky and Mark Cicchetto enter the ring for a championship bout as their senses shattering run on Daredevil reaches its most ambitious point yet. They've dragged Matt Murdock to the deepest and darkest places uh, of his entire history, but they're about to drag him even lower. 145 out of 150 like it with a 4.6 average. This book had a very high score. I know some of my friends and things don't care for this, and the turn this book has taken, and I get that. I really do. I thought the art was good, though, and I think I would, though, I would like to see Daredevil fighting more street-level characters again. I, I do like, though, how Chip Zdarsky shows his knowledge of Daredevil's history in this issue, so that was not a problem there all right for now the number one the bottom of the bin and this one hurts me this one this one sticks it to me hard it was captain america sentinel liberty number 13 i gave it a 6.9 yeah let me get my notes here okay 42 though out of 46 like it with a 3.9 average rating and that's higher than what i would have given it jackson lansing was a writer as well as colin kelly and an artist elena ever i can't pronounce that i apologize just when the white wolf thinks he's gained the upper hand sam wilson and steve rogers rally under the banner of captain america yeah under the banner of captain america meanwhile black widow and peggy carter clash over what it means to be a hero and whether bucky barnes is still someone worth saving so why did I give this a score? Well, I thought it's a pretty lame dialogue between Sam and Steve in this issue. It really looks like Marvel's going out of their way to push Steve aside for when the movie with the new Captain America movie comes out, 
focusing on Sam Wilson. You know, I, you know, the Avengers and all that. They're with, they're trying to align, in my opinion. This is my opinion. I'm speculating here that they're trying to push Steve to the side because right now Sam is Captain America in the movies, and they want to line up with that. Henceforth, also why I think they killed Miss Marvel. They're going to relaunch her probably to align more with movies. The art was okay at best in this particular issue, and well, it's just you know another issue in this story. I didn't care for the premise a whole lot of this story in the first place, the retconning the character, the the and what his shield meant and everything. And so I gave it a 6.9 because I think it does a little damage to the character. It shouldn't be done. We had Sam Wilson beat uh, Steve Rogers in a fight, which is just not going to happen. I'm sorry. And I like Sam. I'm a huge Sam Wilson Falcon fan. So don't at me. Don't at me. Okay. Well, you can if you want. But hey, I think it's baloney. All right, so we did the Bob. Now, before I get to the top three, the ones I think you definitely should be getting, I want to take a moment to thank these people here. Without these people, this channel would not be possible. They support the channel financially as well through Patreon and Subscribestar, and they continue to help out so I can do this. These are amazing people, and some of them have channels too. So take the time and check them out. They really are great people, because here's the thing. I can tell there are a community that cares about comics, because we don't all align even close on views on things like politics and things like that, but yet we can still unite under comic books and discuss them and have fun. And that's what I want to do. Breed a culture of people that can have different opinions, but yet we can still appreciate one another for what we are. All right, so my next one, my notes are going to get moved here. There we go. My top three. Yes, do you heard me right? We're going to go to the top three. My number three was Batman number 136 with a 7.8 score. Now, League of Comics Geeks, 235 out of 243 liked it with a 4.1 average rating, which is pretty high, so I think that still fits well with me. And Chip Zdarsky is the writer. The artist is George Corona and Belen Ortega. Ortega? I'm terrible at these names. Anyway, dusk to dawn, the plans below. Failsafe and Red Mask have forever changed Batman, and Gotham isn't as welcoming as it once was. Can Batman remind them who he is? Can he remind Catwoman? The future of the Bat books start here, and everyone's world is about to explode. Yes, yeah, so I wasn't a fan of the last storyline with him in the alternate reality. That's just not my kind of thing. But now he's back, back into the regular universe so i like that anyway i thought this book had some decent art we had some nice scenes i really appreciate bruce being back as i said though i'm not a fan of the multiverse stuff i'm not against multiverse it's been used too much but here's the thing here's the thing i think i like the most about the book we had some panels at the end with tim drake and stephanie brown and this was sort of a dagger it was a blessing and a dagger it's a dagger because it reminds us what we don't have because of dc's agenda but it does remind us of how great of a couple Tim and Stephanie are. And I know, once again, they're not a couple anymore because then there's Bernard. But this is, once again, showing these this couple just work. This was a tragedy that DC took this from us. And I put it up on social media, and it's got quite an uproar uh, of support, too, as well. Showing, I think, that people really want Tim Drake and Stephanie in the direction that they've taken tim drake for agenda just isn't working and once again it's not an anti or hate thing it's just they were in my opinion one of the best couples in dc one of the longest standing and best couples so batman 136 with a 7.8 my next one my number two boy this one i am not surprised because lately the writing for the, uh, this writer has been knocking it out of the ballpark which surprised me because i'm not a fan of this writer and it was none other than shazam number two i gave it at 8.1 187 out of 189 liked it on league of comics geeks with a 4.4 rating saying they, they agree with me that this book has been good the cover i liked it this book was just very entertaining mark wade's writing it the artist dan mora and that says a lot because i am not a fan of mark wade as a person and that's showing you, i'm trying my best to look beyond that i'm really impressed we've had solid art in this book great characterization the story is fun this is a great book for new readers and ones of old of shazam if you don't know shazam well this is a good one to read if you do this is a good one to read i think you're gonna like it shazam versus shazam billy batson was given the power of the gods by the wizard shazam but solomon hercules atlas zeus achilles and mercury never gave the wizard their permission Displeased with how Billy is representing him, the disgruntled gods engage in a six-way fight for the role, for the soul control, I mean not role, the soul control of the world's mightiest mortal. Or 
if they get their way. The world's mightiest puppet may be the craftiest god win. So yes, they're fighting for control over Billy. We'll see what happens. This has been an absolute fun read. I think if you're not reading it, you are truly, truly missing out on something special. All right, my number one, I think you might know what this one is. This series has continued to be good and still is. And that's the Flash issue number 800. Flash issue 800. You ready for it? Score was an 8.2. Yeah, here we go. We have a group of writers on this one. We had Jeff Johns, Mark Wade, Simon Spear, uh, Joshua Williamson, Jeremy Adams, and then we had artist Mike Diodato Jr., Francis Menpal, Scott Collins, Carmen D. G. I'm sorry, dude. I'm butchering that. Todd Nwick. <laughs> we have uh, Fernando Passerin. There's just this is a group book. Number 800 is a celebration of Wally West. And you know what? I think we needed this after all the damage has been done to this character. It's been being Wally's been getting put back and being good. And this is just another high five saying, hey, we care about Wally West. We're going to treat this character right. This was an oversized anniversary issue, right? And it concludes, though, Jer the writer Jeremy Adams acclaimed tenure. That's the sad part there because his writing on this title has been phenomenal. So Jeremy Adams, we're sorry that you're going. I know, I believe you're going to Green Lantern. I think that means Green Lantern is going to be something special. You've been doing tremendous on this book. Uh, they took you off this book, and that's sad. I am looking forward to you on Green Lantern, but I am sad to see you leave this book. This was a lot of fun with some heartwarming stories in there. The art was a mixed bag all over the place, different styles. Great issue, though, for Flash fans. If you are a Flash fan, this is definitely a good one. And I really like that they're spinning it off. You notice there, if you paid attention to the very end, if you read this, if you didn't, here's a little nugget here. There's going to be a, a series with Wally and his family. And I think it's long deserved. 191, once again, 197 liked it with a 4.3 average rating. This was a definite number one book. All right, now that we got the top three of the bottom three, we're going to go in the ones that are, you know, in between the, the mid. mid. <laughs> the mid. All right, so here we go. I'm going to cruise through those a little bit faster, I think. Well, it depends on how fast I can pull out my notes here on those. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I got to go with my notes here. The first page, are you ready for this one? This one's been, uh, I've been happy that this book has been pretty good. And that's the Invincible Iron Man number seven. I gave it a 7.6 out of 10. Good art, good action. I like this story. It's nice seeing Rhodey and in, in our and Iron Man teaming up there. I, I really do. Tony and, and and Rhodey just make a good buddy couple. 48 out of 51 like of the 4.1 average rating. Jerry D Duggan uh, is writer and Juan for Gary is our good team up. They're doing a good job. Tony Stark is in dire need of a win. That's true. He's been taking a beating in this series. But how does he plan to get ahead? By building a new suit of armor. Yeah, we get to see another cool suit of armor. The suit's first objective, well, is to infiltrate and destroy Stark Industries because we've got to get rid of those Sentinels. As we also find out that not only are those Sentinels going to target X-Men, not just mutants, no. They're actually set to target all of the superheroes. I am enjoying this story, and I think you will too. If you've been an Iron Man fan and been, you know, felt like you've been kicked in the, in the bag, in the fun bag for a long time, well, I think this is going to be uh, something that you might enjoy. It's sort of a return to form. It's taking, it's going away from that. No, granted, they have done some damage to the character in his past with the parents issue and all that, which I think is a complete mess. I don't know how they'll fix that. Hopefully one day they will. But this book, it's taken the emphasis off of that. We haven't been seeing as much into that. And it's been a pretty solid book. All right, my next one in the mid is The Joker, The Man Who Stopped Laughing, number nine, where I gave it a 7.02. The art's okay. The main story, though, has continued to be interesting. 49 out of 50 liked it with a four average rating on League of Comics Geeks. And anyway, it's written by Matthew Rosenberg and artist Francesco Francillo and Carmen D. I, I apologize for all those people on terrible names. So what's big and scary and lives in the sewers? I think you already know the answer. We're getting ready. Ge we're gearing up for a Joker versus Joker war. They're gearing up and each side is getting their group together for fighting the other Joker. Also, we have some Red Hood in this. And I always love me some Red Hood. As Red Hood is being set to take the fall at Blackgate Prison, he gets 
uh, jailbreak. And I'm not going to tell you who did it and who's supporting it. I think that's something you want to check out for yourself. This series has been pretty good. I've been enjoying it. I didn't care for the secondary story very much. I usually don't in this series. I wish they would just put more on the primary. But nonetheless, it was a fun read. So this is something you might want to check out. This next one, I can't believe I like it as much as I do. It's just something that I didn't think normally I would. And that's Peacemaker Tries Hard number two. I gave it a 7.5. The League of Comics Geeks doesn't disagree with me, though. 77 out of 78 liked it with the 4.4 average rating kyle starks does an interesting job of of dialogue here it's just bringing an element of fun to this character it's funny it's going overboard with the foul language and disgusting things and normally i don't like that but for some reason it's just working for me and it makes me laugh the artist steve pugh is doing a good job as well the brain has given peacemaker no choice but to come a dangerous mission on his behalf but he won't have to kick bad guy butt on his own because he's gonna get mala at his side peacemaker breaks into the secret base of general morris to steal some supervillain dna and i'm not gonna tell you the rest of what happens there but i must admit for some reason this series has me laughing i just i enjoy it i don't know why as i said normally this kind of thing doesn't do it when it gets that dirty i don't care for it that much but for some reason it, this one just continues to make me laugh the absurdity i think is what it is the stupidity it's just it's just working for me all right the next one we got two more to go people stick with me all the way to the end come on you can do it anyways is venom number 20 with a 7.3 yeah uh, 63 out of 66 liked it on the League of Comics Gate Geeks with a 4.2 average rating. Al Ewing is the writer and artist is Kafu. And here's the thing. I usually have not been enjoying this series very much, but this one really is the first issue of the series in a long time that I've really liked. Good action, fun story. It's nice to see uh, Brock back in black again. And I really like this black jacket deal where they had it spray painted the Venom symbol on. It's pretty good. Uh, he is back in an interesting way. And I think you might like this if you're a venom fan you might like this if you haven't been enjoying the current direction i get it i feel you i haven't either but this one i seem to like and this next one the last one i can't believe i'm saying this okay this one really does surprise me it's spider-man number nine you ready i gave it a 7.1 yeah we finally get an old school bank robbery in this how long has it been since we've gotten an old school bank robbery in a comic book it even was mentioned within that the art was great let's be honest uh mark bagley always does great art but here's the thing the writer is dan slot notoriously crappy writer for spider-man terrible with dialogue but i must admit this was a fun issue really it was now one thing though i do say is we need to get rid of Sp spider boy that that's stupid spider boy is dumb get rid of that once again another dan slot character trying to make something happen to collect money later on but anyway, 41 out of 45 liked it with a 3.8 average rating. Maxed out part two, spider sensitivity training. Spider-Man's spider sense is on overdrive, which I think this is an interesting premise. It's driving him insane, and Electro has always been one to listen when opportunity knocks. It really is just sort of an old school style of comic book. I have to give it to Dan Slott for a good job on this issue. And if you know me, you know there is a bias there. I will admit that there is definitely a bias there. But this is the strongest Spider-Man book we've had in a while. Um, that's not saying a lot because we had Spider-Verse with Spider-Man in this Spider-Man series that sucked. And the other amazing Spider-Man has been terrible as well. But this one was more of a return to form. I got to give it to Dan for that. So I know Dan's done me wrong. He's done me dirty a lot, but I try to be fair. Well, everybody, there you go. There's what I read, what I like, what I didn't like, my thoughts. What are yours? I'd love to see them in the comments below. If you don't mind, hit like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you want to help support the channel, we could greatly appreciate it. And you know what I'm going to say next. Until next time, everybody, keep it frugal.